Uh, Monib, uh, welcome to the show. I'm uh, grateful to you for joining me, especially as it's not early. It's uh, late at night where you are. Um, am I right in saying uh, that the first round has gone to the United States and its allies uh, in the Pakistan opposition, that Imran Khan is no more, and that his life is potentially now at risk? Uh, thank you, George, for having me here. It is a pleasure and an honor to be here with you. And uh, I guess, yeah, uh, keeping in view, looking at the situation, how it developed last night, it was one hell of a night last night and we couldn't sleep all night because of what was happening in uh, Pakistan and of course we saw uh, a lot of surprises coming up. Uh, the Supreme Court opened at midnight, uh, the Islamabad High Court opened at 10 p.m. Uh, then the Election Commission of Pakistan was opened, uh, although it was a holiday. Uh, we, we were seeing a lot of things happening so it does seem it, it doesn't seem actually, it is confirmation that the U.S. had won the first round. Yes, that is true. Now, what happens next? Uh, what will happen, first of all, uh, to Imran Khan personally? Uh, we are expecting, uh, as the uh, former uh, Minister for Information had stated today, that uh, the PTI uh, government, uh, the former PTI government, and now the PTI chairman Imran Khan, it's quite hard to digest this so far, uh, but they have decided that they are maybe going for the resignations, but that is not confirmation. Uh, but this thing is certain that Imran Khan is going to come on the roads and he is going to gather the public support. And as today, as we're speaking, uh, nationwide protests are happening and uh, thousands of people have rallied in Islamabad to show support for Imran Khan and this is what he had uh, in his mind and this is what he had stated earlier in his uh, addresses to the nation in his speeches that I am going to the club uh, to the public and uh, the public is going to help me and the public is not slave unlike the uh, ministers unlike the mnas and unless uh, unlike the other political parties they are not slave they are uh, people who believe in independence in sovereignty and this is what imran khan is going to do he is going to gather the public support and uh, come out against the government but he can't get a general election, can he, unless a given number of MNAs resign. I'm presuming that number is larger than the number he has still loyal to him. So he needs 172 resignations if they are to dissolve the National Assembly. And if the National Assembly dissolves, that is the only way they can move to the elections. Now, Imran Khan doesn't have 172, uh, 172 members with him, because if he had 172 members, he would have won the no motion, uh, the no confidence motion against him. So it is a it is a very tricky situation now, and we have to see as uh, how it develops. Uh, but the point is that Imran Khan is uh, not going to give up. Uh, this is very clear. And uh, even if he doesn't have those numbers, uh, this is very much possible that uh, uh, he might not uh, decide to resign from the National Assembly. He might stay there. He might appoint an opposition leader. He might force and he might push uh, the sitting government into opening an investigation into that letter which the National Security Committee of Pakistan, which was... In, in, in the meeting, all the army chiefs were present and the DGISI was present and they all endorsed that threat letter. Uh, they called uh, the uh, U.S. ambassador to the foreign minister, uh, to the foreign minister's office. They protested the Senate de Marche. So they have endorsed the letter. So now the point is, and uh, the, the, the number one thing that Imran Khan is going to push is to open an independent investigation to find out whether the letter he says is a threat letter received from the United States is truth or not, whether it's real or whether it's fake, because there is a debate happening in Pakistan. There is a certain amount of society which claims that the letter, the threat letter received and endorsed by the National Security Committee is fake. If the letter was fake, how come the National Security Committee endorsed the letter? They called the uh, U.S. ambassador, the Senator Demarche. 
So this is something which is happening in Pakistan. It it is uh, it is uh, it is a mess here. Uh, but let's see. Uh, Imran Khan is not going to give up. Uh, that's for certain. That's for sure. And uh, he is going to push uh, for an investigative uh, committee uh, uh, so that they can find the truth to the investigation uh, in, into the investigation of the letter. And uh, of course, since Imran Khan uh, could not. Uh, uh, release uh, the letter and show to the mass public because of the Security Act. But this is certain that after the National Security Committee's endorsement uh, with all the uh, forces chiefs present, uh, this does make a very, very big difference. Now, uh, who will be the new government? Uh, one presumes it will be uh, the Sharif brothers, Nawaz, and Shabazz Sharif have been in double harness in the Punjab and in the uh, national government of Pakistan for so many years, uh, decades, uh, in fact. Uh, but uh, Nawaz Sharif is terribly, terribly ill. That's why he was released to come to England. Presumably, he's not in a state to return and become prime minister again. Does that mean that his brother Shabazz, whom I know quite well, I may say, Last time I spoke to him was in Edgewell Road. Uh, I think he owns some fine properties there. Uh, will he be the prime minister? Right, George. So now Shabazz uh, Sharif is the uh, selected, is the selected, the terminology goes to Shabazz Sharif now, which they have been uh, claiming about Imran Khan. So yeah, Shabazz Sharif is uh, eyeing the position of the prime minister of Pakistan and uh, Expectedly, expectedly, this isn't confirmed, but uh, Maulana Fazlur Rahman is eyeing for the position of the president of Pakistan. And uh, Nawaz Sharif, uh, interestingly, uh, he had uh, a confirmed uh, flight from uh, London to Islamabad on the 3rd of April, the date on which the uh, counting, uh, on which the day the motion was to be moved in the National Assembly and the voting was to be done. But uh, the speaker, uh, the deputy speaker of the National Assembly ruled out the voting and uh, then we saw uh, uh, a cancellation of Nawaz Sharif's seat uh, from London to Islamabad. So it seems that he was really, really ill. He was really, really sick. His platelets, uh, you know, they're just up and down. And before 3rd April, he was really sick. On 3rd April, he became perfect. And then uh, on the evening of 3rd April, when the speaker ruled out uh, the motion. So he, he became sick again. And obviously he has been running away from the courts. Uh, he is in London and you have seen his properties uh, worth millions of pounds, embezzled, money laundered. Uh, he is a runaway from the Pakistani courts. He's been convicted. He's been sentenced. Uh, he is, uh, he cannot run for elections. So uh, Shabash Sharif is the man who is going to come into power and we are expecting a lot of changes uh, from the new government. Uh, for example, they are going to offer uh, NROs uh, to all of these corrupt politicians, to all of these members who have helped um, the Sharifs or the Pakistan Democratic Movement in ousting uh, Imran Khan. Uh, we, we are also possibly seeing that now, Shabash, uh, now Nawaz Sharif has turned all perfect and he's, he's, um, he's the fittest he's ever been in his life now uh, after the ouster of Imran Khan. So we also are expecting a return of Nawaz Sharif to the country. And uh, once he comes back to the country, so the sitting uh, prime minister, his younger brother, might give him NRO. Uh, national reconciliation order and you know all is forgiven and uh, he might again uh, become the chairman of the political party it's a, it's a, it's a mess but the thing is uh, the thing is that uh, the uh, new government to come is going to make a lot of changes and uh, amounting to uh, the complete cleansing of the uh, cases corruption cases murder cases against them against their loyal members who were bought uh, by uh, millions of rupees and uh, of which there is video proof, interestingly. Uh, but uh, very interestingly, the Supreme Court in Pakistan uh, was listening uh, to Shabazz Sharif's uh, review petition uh, when the deputy speaker, uh, you know, cancelled the, the uh, voting motion. So Shabazz Sharif was a runaway 
he was a convicted money launderer and he was not appearing in local courts because whenever the courts asked him uh, to make an appearance so that they can indict him. So Shabash Sharif al always used to make the excuse of uh, health issues. Uh, and But miraculously, he somehow, uh, you know, maybe he took some injections or whatever, some, some powerful medicines, <laughs> that he was able to go to the Supreme Court of Pakistan and stand in front of the Chief Justice of Pakistan. And the Chief Justice of Pakistan was listening to a convict, a money launderer, a person who uh, has not been answering the courts of Pakistan. So this was also a very big surprise. And I mean, last night, uh, George, we saw Imran Khan uh, under really hot waters. And uh, we saw how the entire country's institutions united against this one man not and he's not being ousted he's not being thrown out of power because of corruption he's not being thrown out of power because he's uh, he's embezzled money or money laundering or any other corruption charges his only charge was that he said absolutely not to the united states he went to russia when the u.s were forcing him to not visit Russia. And he said that I am going to make a sovereign state with an independent foreign policy. And my people, 220 million people, are not slave to any man or country. This is the reason why they all want him out. And, of course, his fight against the corruption inside Pakistan. Because if he stays in power, they know he is going to get them all behind the bars. Well, uh, he's used to standing alone at the crease. Uh, and he may well have lost the first round. But nobody should bet against him coming back. Thanks uh, very much indeed, Munib, for joining us at this late hour from Pakistan.